Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Lenore von Stein, and this is an episode of The Facts, and I'm here with Beth Griffith and Andrew Bolotowski. And uh, what this episode is called is uh, Thinking and Making Art. So this episode is about this, you know, making art is, is to me is like making things in order to talk for real, to talk comprehensively. And that means bringing in lots of lines of things that are happening simultaneously, contradicting one another, uh, bouncing off of one another, and that's what's actually happening. Art is uh, an important companion for me. Bec um, so, you know, if, like if I'm anxious or I'm waiting for someone, I, I can practice or I can write or I can draw, or I can do something. You know, it's, it's better than just pretending because I'm creating something and, and it's, it's a good friend like food. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
We're playing in this big open studio with people walking around back there. Sometimes I'm, my eyes are wandering. Um, so these days, more often than I used to in the past, I, was, I always wanted to do this, to say what I mean and mean what I say. I mean, when I was a kid, I, I wrote this on, the, on my wall. I painted it on my wall from Alice in Wonderland, say what you mean and mean what you say, because I had such a hard time doing it. And that was the, that was the thing that, that attracted me to acting, because that's what actors call living in the moment. And, um, and because it, it, it gave me a chance, a possibility of being for real, at least for that time that I was on the stage. And, and I'm wondering if that's why this culture, mm -hmm. our culture, is so obsessed with actors on a, on a deeper level because the, 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 this idea that they can sense this possibility, this being for real possibility. You certainly don't see that when you, you know, when you're watching most things. Imagine that on CBS News. I mean, perhaps the music here. I hope the music. It's, it's, it's for me often. It's, it's, it's when there, there, there aren't enough words. You know, words just won't do the trick. Music, and then music won't do the trick. Words, you know, and and um, the art that nourishes me is really nourishes me. I like, you know, just pulling fleas out of my hair kind of stuff too. I watch TV, but it, but the stuff that really nourishes me is 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 not a popularity contest. It's an adventure. It's a quest. It's a it's a understanding more of who I am and you know insight, you know, and it's not something that you can copy from other people because copies aren't valuable because they're not on topic, they're not instructive. It's not that they're just, it's not that they're just new, it's that new. they are, uh, at best, yeah. approximations. It's, they're not made of the stuff about the, that's made up of the situations that you're talking about. They're copies. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Recently, I've been pondering programmatic versus absolute music uh, without really, you know, I've used these terms for many years, but I never really knew how they were defined anyway. So uh, I used to think I wrote, I write absolute music, I'm pure. And uh, the Oxford Dictionary says that uh, programmatic music is intended to evoke images or convey a compression of events. And absolute music is instrumental music um, uh, composed purely as music, not intended to represent or illustrate something else. And that, that's why um, um, composers put, used abstract titles like number five in G major so they wouldn't be tied to anything extra musical. Uh, of course, all of my pieces do have titles, and they are about something. And th tonight we played Criteria, Losing Weight, or we will be playing uh, Alfred Hitchcock, const Construction, Guitar. And right now we're going to play something called Next to New. They're going to play it. <laughs> Um, I'm reading, the reason that I've been thinking again about programmatic maps, I'm reading this really good book about the evolution of Beethoven's music by Lewis Lockwood. And Lockwood says that as a tone poet, Beethoven accepted and exploited music's power to evoke nameable, identifiable externalities, you know, the trees, the war, the this and that. But as a pure musician, he rejoiced in, the, in composing music whose structural and expressive power reinforced its claim to autonomy. Do 
sexual roles, the roles that men and women play, um, gender roles, or you know, there's more than there's more than that, I guess, gender roles. But anyway, uh, they are culturally sustained, and and they satisfy the organization of a particular society, and they're inherited, you know, but not like genes. Mm -hmm. And and all the societies mm -hmm. that I know of uh, feature an unequal access to resources and power. Um, who's the boss and why? Ooh, I I just think there's like 55 million, zillion, billion, quadrillion things, and all of them are, you know, and, and you know, and I, you know, all of them are important, and, 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 and I can't ever find the truth without getting a hold of them, and, and but I can't get a hold of them. I mean, so come on, because there are so many, come on, so many, and they're moving. So this is the stuff with making art, you know, thinking, thinking about things that I really care about. I don't, you know, I don't really want to do a whole lot of that. Uh, thinking about things that I really care about uh, because it's, it's, it's scary and it can be depressing, you know, and, and a lot of the times I would imagine like many people, I'm just trying to, you know, get through it, you know, and get to sleep, you know, or, you, you know, and, and not, not think about these things, but I have to think about these things as an artist. That's my job, you know, I assume. That's my responsibility. I have to, if I'm going to be for real, I got to be for real, you know, and if, if what I have to offer my fellow human beings is, is me for real, then, you know, here we go. You know, I just said it. So, um, so writing something down, so when I, you know, get myself, in, or I start writing, I'm not so upset, but let's say, you know, I, somewhere I get upset, I'm writing, because I'm always writing about things that disturb me. I mean, what, I'm always making art about something that disturbs me, but that's the thing that propels me to make something. I, I, I'm uncomfortable with the situation, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to figure it out. And, um, and so, when I, when I write something, or I perform something, or, and I'm focusing on a disturbing experience, and and or feeling the act of making the piece unravel some of those mysteries. I go to sleep that night, not only because I think that, you know, maybe sometimes because I think the thing that I wrote is, you know, wonderful, uh, but because uh, I go to sleep, you know, feeling better uh, with, and because I've had some insight and it brings a perhaps, a, it, it, it brings a more, solid peace of mind than I had before I was prodded into, however, for whatever reason, into thinking about this thing that disturbs me that I couldn't avoid. You know, I, I mean, what could prod me except, I mean, it's, you know, it, it, what makes things move except, you know, the, something pushes them and usually you're not aware of what it is that pushes them and mm -hmm. at least I'm not, you know, unless it's something very dramatic. And um, so that's the 
that's why I make art, and I think that's a big purpose for it. It's certainly a purpose for it for me as an as a as a audience to other people's art, and 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 a good reason to keep it going. And all societies have had it. Uh, you know, we all know cavemen and everything. You know, they all everybody does. Every all world, you know, all people have always done this. Um, and some societies have very little of it. But that's not good. Somebody told me a story about some place where there were very few festivals and very few anything, and people had worked all the time, and they didn't have drawings, very many drawings. They must have had some, you know, but it's a dry life. You know, you eat the same foods, and you... Because life is enormous, you know, it's enormous, oh. you know, and, and, you know, to just be notching in and in the same ways over and over again. Can that be healthy? I went to a graduation today, a graduation of a friend of mine, and people were saying, yeah, it's just a beginning. You're just a beginning. You're just going out. I mean, I don't know what happened to the rest of the other 24 years of her life. She began a long time ago. Because it could be the beginning of a new phase, you know, we're always just always Middle. beginning, beginning, F beginning. Except then, and except that, except that, and except that, and except that, and accept that, and leave that out, and accept that, and grab that, and take that, and leave that here, and get me something else, and which makes and you can catch us on the web this is the facts uh, we're on m and and you can catch us on the web and you know I, I hope you enjoyed yourself and and you know I enjoyed myself so listen, ladies and gentlemen, from I think I can say from all of us, good night.